fighting a man like that, don't sleep. Watch. And so he went to sleep. And they were told, David and his men came near. Look at verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it seemeth good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. The man was asleep. And so David cut off part of the clothes to go far and to announce and to show him King Saul my father are you asleep? Abner all those warriors 3,000 people are you all asleep? I have been there. David got there. None of the 3,000 chosen men around Saul knew about it. They were all asleep. When men sleep, the people around you, in the church, the people who should be watching, everybody sleeping. And then the enemy has come. And thank God David had the fear of God. Otherwise, would have finished him. He would have died because he was not conscious of the nearness of the person he called his enemy. It tells us in verse 11, Moreover, my father, see, ye, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Your life was in my hand. The great warrior, the whole nation chose you. So that you'll go before them to battle. You'll be the number one warrior in the land of Israel. And warrior number one, you were asleep. And your entourage and all the people around you that should be keeping watch, they were asleep. In any case, the scratch of the robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the scratch of thy robe and killed thee not know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand and I have not sinned against thee yet thou huntest my soul to take it chapter 26 in chapter 26 we're reading from verse 4 David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deed. Are you that wise fighting against an enemy? Here is Saul, a great warrior. Here is Saul, the number one in the country, in the nation. He was fighting against a man. And the man he was fighting against, sharp-sighted, intelligent, very wise, and vigilant. He sent out spies. Go watch him. Go see whether he's actually nearby. You see, when you're fighting against a devil that is vigilant, you're fighting against demons that are much, much experienced. They have been here in the world before you were born. And they have fought many battles and they have brought many people down. And yet, you live an easy life. You're not watching. For this year is turning to an end. You have not fasted one day in the whole year. You just take everything easy. You know, you open the Bibles. The Bible, and then you read a few verses a day. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. And you are out. You don't know what you are up against. But David, he sent spies out. 
I want you to look at verse 7. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay, tell me that, the next word there. I can't hear you. Sleeping. Saul lay sleeping within the trench. And his spears stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. And they were all sleeping. Abner slept. All the people around him slept. And Saul himself slept. It was in the night. Ah, you say it's night. Who can be awake in the night? Well, I know one man that was awake in the night. David. I know one man that was awake in the night. Abishai. Those were people they knew were fighting. They knew the man is fighting. If he gets us, if he catches us asleep, it's not going to be as lenient as we have been. The man will take us off. And the anointing that Samuel had poured upon David will be forgotten because Saul will get rid of that David. Therefore, the man was awake. Do you have an anointing upon your life? Do you have a calling upon your life? Do you have an assignment the Lord has given you? And the devil will fight it tooth and nail. And the demons will fight it tooth and nail. And you act like an ordinary person. You go about like an ordinary person. You say, you know, I'm a plain person. I'm a simple person. In fact, I can, you know, tell anybody anything in my life. I don't fear anybody. Because I love everybody. Everybody loves me. You think so? Everybody loves you. Demon possessed people love you. You think so? And those people that are that have swallowed up Satan, they love you. Everybody loves me. Everybody did not love Jesus. Judas did not love Jesus. Caiaphas did not love Jesus. All those people that wanted to crucify him, they didn't love Jesus. Even the people he had healed and the people he had delivered, not all of them didn't all love Jesus. If they didn't all love Jesus, everybody loves me. I love everybody. You think so? David was watching while Saul was asleep. You will not sleep. I said you will not sleep. That devil will not catch you. Those demons will not catch you. The anointing of God upon your life, nothing will stop it in Jesus' name. But you see this Saul now, he was asleep. And then we're told in verse 16. Verse 16, look at this. Here is David now, he's talking back to them. The scene is not good. That thou hast done. Talking to Abner. As the Lord liveth. Ye are worthy to die. Because ye have not kept your master. The Lord's anointed. And now see. Where the king's spear is. And the cruise of water. That was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice. And said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my Lord, O King. Well, you know the story. The point I'm making is this, that Saul slept at the wrong time. Even though he had all those soldiers around him, they slept too. Are you up to something? Do you have anything precious you should watch over? Or are you empty? Do you have any treasure at all? Do you have anything important? Is there the hand of the Lord upon your life? Are you called for something serious? Are you to achieve something no other person can achieve? Don't you know the devil will be after that? Don't you know that the principalities and powers will be watching to see when you'll be careless? 
Things will change. You'll be away from tonight. Your anointing will increase. And nobody will make a mess of that anointing in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, you will wake up. And when the giant wakes up, all those grasshoppers that will be crawling upon you. And they will be making a, a great day over you. Tonight, they will flee away in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. Wherefore, he says, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Are you there? I said, are you there? Christ will give you light. It will give you power. It will give you protection. But you have to wake up. Point number two. Warning against condemned, selfish sleep. Warning against condemned, selfish sleep. Look at Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. We're reading from verses 10 and 11. In verse 10, it's watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. There are many people that love sleep more than their duty. They love sleep more than their responsibility. Here are, here are watchmen. And these watchmen, they were careless. They were sleeping. And then it says, Yea, the greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds, they're supposed to be, that cannot understand. They, it says, they are all, they all look up to their own ways. That's the selfishness there. Everyone for his own gain, that's the selfishness from every quarter. And when you are made a watchman, and instead of watching over all that the Lord has given you to watch over, you are watching over some selfish interest, some things that are personal, and they are not part of the work the Lord has given you to do. A lot will be lost. Nahum, Nahum chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 18. Nahum, I'm sure you know, is one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Get to the minor prophets and keep opening, and eventually you will get to Nahum. As you get to Nahum, we'll be looking at chapter 3. And in chapter 3, we're reading from verse 18. Nahum chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 18. It says, The shepherds slumber, thy shepherds slumber. O king of Assyria, thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. The shepherds shall be watching over them. Because they slumbered and because they were sleeping, the nobles in that nation will die and be in the dust. The people is scattered upon the mountains and no man gathers them. That's the consequence of those shepherds sleeping. And the Lord has made us watchmen. The Lord says we should watch. Ezekiel chapter 3. If you're a pastor, you're a watchman. You're a father over your children, you're a watchman. If you're a mother over your children, you're a watchman. A wife with your husband over your husband, that's a watchman right there. Husband over your wife, that's a watchman. 
a teacher over the students as a watchman. House fellowship leader over your house fellowship as a watchman. A pastor in the local church as a watchman. If the watchman is asleep and he doesn't know what is happening in the surrounding of the people he is watching over, those people are going to get into danger. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the watch at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Hold on now. Ezekiel, a watchman over the house of Israel. Ezekiel, a watchman over the house of Israel. God said, I have made thee a watchman. In the lifetime of Ezekiel, there might be other people that call themselves shepherds, pastors, leaders, preachers, and the Lord has not made them. And Ezekiel cannot sit back and say, oh, the, the pastors are many, the shepherds are many, the watchmen are many, and since we are many. Father, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation, O oh God. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O oh Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from this great congregation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love.